In this game of tic-tac-toe, I'm controlling player O, and player X is controlled by an AI that I've programmed. The AI is not a very pleasant opponent. It will never lose, no matter what I do. If I play well, the game will be tied. But if I make just one mistake, the AI will beat me. The AI is also quite rude sometimes. Here, the AI can win by placing an X in the upper left corner. But it doesn't do that. Instead, it chooses to humiliate me by delaying my inevitable demise. What if we switch so I'm player X and the AI is player O? Then I still cannot win. Best case scenario for me is to tie the game, no matter who goes first. In this video, you will see how the AI works and why it is unbeatable. We will also use it to learn good tic-tac-toe strategy so you can beat your friends. Let's get started. First, we look at how the AI decides which moves to make. In the upcoming examples, player X is controlled by the AI and player O is controlled by a human. The word game state, or state for short, is a snapshot of a game like this one. A red border indicates that it's X's turn to move, and a blue border indicates that it's O's turn. When you see a yellow square, it just highlights the most recent move. Alright, let's use this game state as an example. Here the AI has three possible moves leading to these states. In each of them, the opponent has two moves leading to these states. This continues until no more moves can be made, either because a player has won, or because there are no empty squares left. We refer to these states as terminal states. Note that every way the game can play out from the root state corresponds to a path down this tree. Each state is now assigned a utility value, starting with the terminal states. If player O wins, the state gets value minus 1. If player X wins, the value is plus 1. And if it's a tie, the value is 0. So player X wants to reach a state with maximum value, and player O wants to reach one with minimum value. The AI controls player X in this example, so you can think of the values as rewards for the AI. In these states, it's player X's turn, and he likes maximum values. But there is only one available move, so the states just inherit the values from their children. Moving up one level, it's player O's turn, and he likes minimum values. The value for one of these states is found by looking at its children and picking the smallest value found there. Moving up again, we have this state. It's player X's turn and he likes maximum values. So we look at its children and pick the largest value. The AI can now decide which move to make in this state. It chooses a move leading to a state with maximum value. In this example, it will take the bottom left corner. This algorithm is called the Minimax algorithm, and it also works for other turn-based games. Most implementations generate a new tree every time it's the AI's turn. The tree for this example is much bigger, but the state values are computed exactly as we saw before. This time, however, there are multiple moves with equally good values. When this happens, my AI picks randomly between them. Now let's take a look at the full game tree for tic-tac-toe. This tree must be generated to find the best starting move. As you can see, it is huge. It contains more than half a million states. Already from layer 5, there are more states in one layer than there are pixels in a horizontal line of this video. But if I zoom in, you can see that the states are indeed there. 
Techniques exist which can reduce the size of these trees, but they are actually not required for tic-tac-toe. Modern computers can generate this entire tree and compute the state values in no time. Alright, we'll get back to this tree soon, but first let's try to understand the algorithm a bit better. Does it really make sense to choose moves based on the values? And what do the values actually reflect? For the terminal states, it's pretty intuitive. You can think of them as rewards for the AI. Plus one for a win, minus one for a loss, and zero for a tie. But it's a little less obvious what the values mean for other states. Here they reveal which reward the AI will ultimately get, assuming both players play optimally. So from this state, optimal play will lead to a tight game. From this state, the AI will win. And from this state, Optimal play leads to a loss for the AI. But of course, it would never allow its opponent to reach this state in the first place. The AI always makes optimal moves, but the opponent might not. So what happens if you make suboptimal moves against the AI? Can you trick it by making a bad but unexpected move? The answer is no. If you do that, the AI will win. Here is an example. From this state, the AI might choose to place an X at the bottom left corner. The resulting state has value 0, so it should lead to a tie. But if player O chooses a suboptimal move, then it leads to a state with value plus 1. From here, the AI can and will win the game. So the values are really worst case final rewards from the AI's point of view. If we look at the full game tree again, it should now be clear why the AI cannot lose. The value of the initial state is zero, so if the opponent plays optimally, the game will be tied. But if he makes just one bad move, the AI will win. This is also true if we make the AI control player O instead. So is this AI the perfect tic-tac-toe player? Well, not quite. Look at this state from the intro. The AI can win immediately by placing an X in the upper left corner. But it won't always choose to do so. To see why, we look at the game tree. As far as the AI is concerned, these four moves are equally good. No matter which one it picks, it will win, and it doesn't care how many moves that takes. I wouldn't call this a flaw, but it does lead to unsportsmanlike behavior, that's for sure. If we use slightly smaller values for win states that occur deeper in the tree, the AI would always choose to win as fast as possible. There is another, more significant issue with this AI. I said earlier that it always chooses optimal moves, but that's only true if the opponent never makes mistakes. Although you cannot trick the AI by making bad moves, it's still not ideal that it expects the opponent to be flawless. Take a look at this example state with value 0. From here, the AI must choose between three moves. As far as it's concerned, they are equally good. But I'd argue that this move is worse than the other two. That's because it leads to a tie no matter what the opponent does. In the other two states, there is a chance that the opponent makes an oversight, so the AI can actually win. A better AI would use this information to give itself as many chances to win as possible. Okay, now we know how the AI works, so let's focus on two human players. What strategy should you use to beat your friends? There are basically two different ways to win. In this state, player X only needs this position to win, but player O fails to see that, so X wins. Of course, most opponents won't make such a mistake, so it's rare to win this way. The other, more common way to win 
is trickier. In this state, there are two different positions X can mark to win the game. Player O can mark one of them, but not both. He is essentially trapped. It's of course also possible for player O to lead player X into such a trap. The question is, what's the best way to lure your opponent into a trap? And how do you avoid being trapped yourself? In this last part of the video, we will see which opening moves are best and how the opponent should respond to each of them. Take a look at this tree here. It contains the first four layers of the full game tree. Initially, player X can choose between nine different moves. But many of them are equivalent and will therefore have the same value. There are really only three unique moves to choose from. Taking a corner, the center, or an edge position between two corners. If you are player X, who always moves first, which move should you choose? I created a YouTube poll with this question, and the majority voted for the center position. But let's see. As we have covered already, the initial state has value 0, so there is no guaranteed way to win. The states at level 2 all have value 0 as well, so you cannot lose the game with your first move either. Let's take a closer look at the center move, which most people picked in the poll. We can see that player O must now take one of the corners. Otherwise, the game will be in a plus one state, meaning that X can pull off a trap and win guaranteed. If player O does take a corner, then X doesn't have to be very careful. Neither of the available moves will allow O to pull off the trap. Next we consider this move. Here player X has marked an edge position between two corners. Again, player O can respond with four good moves. The other four moves will enable player X to pull off a trap. If O does choose a good move, then X must be careful with the next one. Otherwise, O can trap X. I'd say this starting move is worse than the center move. There are four good moves player O can respond with, just like for the center move. But if O responds with a good move, then X must be much more careful. The final starting move is a corner move. From the resulting state, player O must take the center. Any other move enables X to pull off the trap. Even if O does take the center, then X doesn't have to be careful with his next move. In conclusion, I think the corner move is actually the best starting move. The tic-tac-toe strategy guides I've seen online also recommend taking a corner if you go first. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my AI in action and learning about how it works. If you are interested in other similar videos, then check out one of these. Oh, and consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel.